Well, I'm relieved that things or the babies in my uterus, I still have a lot of paranoia. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as promised, I wanted to do an update on everything since my last video, which if you haven't seen my last video, I will leave a card right here if you want to catch up on everything that's been going on. So last week, and then Monday, last week, Monday night, which was about 10 days ago, I found out that I was pregnant um, on an IUD, which I had the Paragarden. And again, if you want to catch up on all the specifics of what happened, I will leave a card so you can check out that video and hear the details. But today I had my follow-up appointment. They wanted to see me about a week later to see how the pregnancy was progressing. So last week they didn't do an ultrasound, they didn't draw blood or anything, they just did a urine sample to confirm that I was pregnant. So today I went back and we did an ultrasound appointment and um, I met with the midwife after. So I wanted to give you, I guess, further information as far as where this pregnancy stands and what's going on. So the ultrasound, really there isn't too much to share at this point. I must have ovulated very late in my cycle because I'm only measuring at, I think they said five weeks and two days, which my last period was February 14th. So technically, if I went off like my traditional cycle, I should be at the end of my sixth week, which again, I'm only measuring it five weeks and two days. But they said everything that they're seeing or that they did see is completely normal for this stage in the pregnancy. So where the egg implanted looked good. They said it was very high in my uterus. They said it was in a good spot. I was nervous that it was going to be ectopic just because I had an IUD, which I forgot to mention in the last video. I said that when you have an IUD, it, you have a 50% higher chance of it being ectopic. But what my midwife told me at my last appointment was that it's a higher chance if you have the Mirena because it's hormones. Um, so it's more than likely not implanted in your uterus. But because one, I had the Paragard and two, it was halfway out of my cervix. Um, she wasn't really that concerned of it being ectopic. So the good news is that the baby is implanted in my uterus and it's in a good spot so i am going back next week friday they wanted me to go in a week after and at the end of the week because by then they should be able to see um how everything is progressing how the baby is doing so while i'm relieved that things or the babies in my uterus i Still have a lot of paranoia and for anybody who has gone through a loss before any type of loss um, pregnancies afterwards tend to have a lot of paranoia associated with them especially the first trimester so I'm on to my third pregnancy my first pregnancy ended in a miscarriage unfortunately at about six weeks and then I carried a healthy, full-term little girl, my second pregnancy. And now this being my third, I'm still having a lot of paranoia even though I carried a baby to term. And I think that's just one of the things that you deal with um, when you go through a tragic situation like a loss. And not to mention, I did have a very traumatic experience my first few weeks of being pregnant with Peyton. They thought that she was an ectopic pregnancy, but the tech wasn't reading things right. And I didn't find out till like a couple days later after going through blood work and everything, this is a whole separate topic, um, that everything was fine and it was a normal pregnancy. So um, yeah, anyways. So while I was there, I asked the midwife um, if I could have my blood drawn, because personally, I feel a lot better having as much information as I can about what's happening. So I asked if I could have my blood drawn and she said, yep, that's completely fine. So I had it drawn today after my appointment and I'm gonna go back in two days on Friday so we can see how my levels are progressing and where my progesterone is at. 
So unfortunately, because I'm going in on a Friday to have um, my results or my blood taken again, I more than likely won't get the results until Monday, which is going to suck because the waiting game when it comes to anything fertility wise is like a day feels like a year and anybody who's been through this journey he knows um it's awful the waiting game is awful so that's kind of where we're at with like doctor's appointments and everything but i also wanted to share with you some symptoms because i think that's pretty interesting okay so after they were removed my iud the past week and a half i've had like nothing scary happened so i haven't had any bleeding i haven't had any like serious cramping where i started to get concerned i did have one day of really bad back pain and i started to freak out um because with my miscarriage i remember the night before i woke up with excruciating back pain in the middle of the night and that ended up miscarrying 48 hours later but since the back pain everything's been fine so i don't know if i just like tweaked my back working out or if i picked up my daughter and it tweaked my back um, but after that one day, it was fine. Other than that, I've had some mild symptoms. My pregnancy with Peyton, I had a very easy pregnancy. I did not have any nausea. Um, I did have breast tenderness and I had like some tenderness under my armpits, which are kind of associated with your um, breasts. And what else? I had cravings. I craved Mexican food and chicken tenders with her. Um, but with this pregnancy, it has been slightly different. So I have noticed that I'm getting more waves of nausea with, like I said, Peyton, I didn't have any. Um, so, and this will come on kind of randomly, different times of the day, um, before I eat, after I eat, in the car, not in the car. Um, so that's something new that I'm experiencing. It's nothing debilitating, but it is definitely... Um, something I'm dealing with right now are these waves of nausea. The fatigue is on another level. Like I haven't slept this much in a really long time and they did, my midwife did warn me of that, that traditionally um, after your first pregnancy you do experience more fatigue because obviously you have a little one to take care of and it just takes more energy out of you and you just can't rest like you did prior to having babies so i like all last week i pretty much napped every time peyton did and i went to bed early so i i slept a lot last week and even still like i'm just i just feel so tired and drained all the time so that's been a little rough to deal with but nothing that you know you really can't manage what else another symptom that i've been experiencing is um kind of my sensitivity to coffee so my first pregnant or so with Peyton I was such an anal freak about everything that I put into my body anything I put on my body so I have switched everything to pretty much all natural when I got pregnant with her in terms of like things I put on my body hair care skin care lotions you name it um and I was very um, anti-caffeine when I was pregnant with her just because of the things that I've heard. But with this pregnancy, you know, my midwife said, you can have at least one cup of coffee a day. You know, it won't hurt you. Just be mindful of the amount of caffeine you're taking in. So the past two times I've had coffee, I didn't even have a full cup. And I'm talking like an eight ounce cup. I had started to experience cramping. So I think going forward, I'm just not going to have any because I don't know if it's my uterus cramping, I don't know if it's like stomach ache type, type cramping, but I just would rather not risk it, especially in the first trimester. So I'm just going to avoid caffeine going forward. And then in terms of cravings, so I think because I'm still quite early, I really don't have any cravings where I'm like, I need it right now sort of um, symptom, but I am noticing I'm gravitating a lot more towards like vegetables. I'm not really... I'm a healthy eater, very conscious of what I eat, but I wouldn't say like I'm a vegetable um, fiend or, you know, I need to have vegetables every day, but I can tell that like whenever I am hungry, that's all I want are vegetables. So lately I've been having a lot of spaghetti squash, um, those salad kits that you find at Costco or the grocery store, like I'm all about the salad kit life right now. Those are probably like my two things. Oh, and cauliflower pizza. Last Yesterday, I really, really wanted cauliflower pizza. 
So that would say is like my only symptom right now in terms of cravings, but nothing, you know, that's totally crazy. I for sure will keep you updated after my next appointment. So next, let's see, Sunday of next week, I will upload another video of how everything went after my next ultrasound appointment and my blood test and all that stuff. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do because you're not going to want to miss out on any future updates on this pregnancy. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.